Now long ago, there was a king who had many, many daughters. They were all pretty, but the youngest was so beautiful, she even dazzled the sun. Now sometimes, when the weather was warm, the princess went out in the forest and sat by a cool, deep well. Now one day she was playing with her favorite golden ball, when all of a sudden, it slipped out of her hands and sank into the water. The princess tried to fish it out, but it was no good. The well was much too deep. Oh dear, said the princess, and she started to cry. Ribbit, 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 ribbit. Whatever's the matter, croaked a voice behind her. The princess turned to see a frog with a wrinkled neck and bulging eyes. I've dropped my favorite golden ball in the well, she sniffed. I'd give anything to get it back. Anything, echoed the frog, hopping into the water. Simply anything. I'd give my clothes, my jewels, and even my precious crown. I have no use for, for crowns or jewels, said the frog. But if you promise to let me come and live with you in your palace, and if you say I can eat from your golden plate and sleep on your silken pillow, I'll fetch your ball for you. Well thought the princess, what a foolish fro frog this is. They can't survive near without ponds and wells, and they certainly can't survive in a house or a palace. So she smiled, and she promised the frog she would take him to the palace with her if she retrieved the ball. The frog promptly dived down to the bottom of the well, and a minute two later, he surfaced with a golden ball in his mouth. Thank you, said the princess. She took out the ball from him, and started running away. Hey, Ribbit, Ribbit, wait for me, she cried the frog. Don't you remember your promise? But the princess didn't listen. She just kept on running and running until she got to her father's palace. And the next day, when the princess was having dinner with her father, something came plip-plopping up the stairs. And when it reached the top, there was a knock at the door and a croaky voice called, Princess! Princess, let me in. Ah, said the king, that must be one of your friends come to visit. Go and open the door. The princess didn't want to, but she did as she was told. And to her horror, the frog was sitting on the doorstep. Bang! The princess slammed the door shut in his face. You're trembling, said her father. Was there a giant out there? No, said the princess. It was only a frog, and she told her father about the golden ball and how the frog had got it back for her. Just then, the frog knocked at the door again, and this time he said, Oi, open up and let me in. You know you said to me down near the well that you, you'd give me all these things? Well, open up and keep your word. A princess should always keep her promise, agreed the king. Let the frog in and give him some dinner. So, the princess opened the door again and the frog followed her in. Lift me up beside you, princess, he commanded. The princess put the frog on a chair beside her. But well, I can't reach your plate from here, complained the frog. Put me on the table. The princess put the frog on the table, but as far away from her as possible. Princess, can you bring your plate closer so we can eat together, said the frog. The princess was so disgusted that she could hardly touch anything. At last the frog said, well, thank you for that excellent meal. Now take me upstairs, I might have some sleep. When the princess heard this, she began to cry. But her father grew angry and said, you should be grateful to anyone who's helped you in your hour of need. Now take the frog up to your room and let him sleep in peace. The princess picked up the frog with two fingers, holding him at arm's length, took him up to her bedroom. Then she put him down in a corner. And the frog said, here, it's not fair that you should lie in a warm bed while I have to make do with a cold stone floor. Let me sleep on your pillow. So reluctantly, the princess lifted the frog onto her soft pillow. Now, Miss Princess, give me a kiss. The princess was horrified. Don't be so cheeky. The frog said, if you do not kiss me, I shall tell the king, and he won't be pleased when I say you've gone back on your word. So the princess, not wanting to get into further trouble with her father, the princess agreed to kiss the frog. And slowly she bent forward and they kissed. 
and all at once there was a blinding flash of light and the frog turned into a prince. This prince was so charming and handsome that the princess was terribly ashamed she'd been so unkind and begged his forgiveness. The prince told her how a horrible witch had put a curse on him and how she, the princess, had broken the curse with her kiss. At dawn, a beautiful carriage came to fetch the prince to his kingdom. All made of gold and drawn by eight strong horses with flowing manes. At the rear stood faithful Henry, the prince's most loyal servant. And poor Henry had been very upset when the witch turned his prince into a fog. So the doctor had put three iron bands around his heart to keep it from breaking from sadness. The princess asked her father if she might marry the prince and he said yes. So the coach driver cracked his whip and the, cat and the servants cheered as the coach set off down the street with faithful Henry standing in his place at the rear. And when the coach was some distance from the palace, the prince heard a loud crack. Henry called, is the carriage falling apart? No, your majesty, replied Henry. It's not the carriage that's breaking. It's one of the iron bands around my heart. There was another crack and another, and Henry yelled with joy, for at last three bands had fallen from his heart. Now he was free to celebrate the return of his prince and to take part in the wedding festivities as his master married the beautiful princess.